con man, a man who cheats or tricks someone by gaining their trust and persuading them to believe something that is not true. Yo, if y'all try to scam, hit me, yo, hit my life. That's all it is, it's a scam, I don't really know. Bully, a person who habitually seeks to harm or intimidate those who they perceive as vulnerable. I'm the bully, I'm the reason why your kid is scared to go to school every day. Wow, 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 cry me a river. No one's bullying anyone. If anything, we should be bullying the world. Watching this video, you're probably in high school or middle school because you know all my viewers are kind of young. Materialism. Yeezy Red October's Fragment One Off White Nike. What Yeezys that are actually dirty? Wealth. As you guys all know, I live in like a fifteen million dollar house. Flex culture. Just me flexing on the haters. An entire generation has grown up watching YouTubers flex their pointlessly expensive possessions, their oddly bare, unfurnished mansions, their expensive cars, and sometimes ugly designer clothing. Flex culture for a while was seemingly an essential component to any YouTube career. Right now, wealth inequality is skyrocketing, homelessness is on the rise, and yet, literal kids are showing off their designer t-shirts and shoes that they paid thousands for to their millions of subscribers online. This odd dystopian nightmare that is our reality is the same reality that created the YouTuber Ricegum. Ricegum is seemingly a byproduct of this era of YouTube, personified into a person. Someone who scammed children. Yo, if y'all trying to scam, bro, That's hit me. Crazy. Yo, hit my live stream. And then flexed on them. Pretty expensive. Thousand. So today, in this video, we are unpacking the nightmare that created this YouTuber. Bro, she low-key got some I think she's 16 to 15. So here's the thing about China is like, or what, I was uh, with my friend and we were like, dude, all of these guys are like bots, like, ro like robots. Like you go to them and you say something and they won't even understand you because they, they don't speak English. So I would just go up there like, yo, hey, wait, wait, but that doesn't make like them robots, you know? And the subsequent scams and manipulation that he participated in. Hello friends and internet acquaintances. Welcome or welcome back to another video on my channel covering the weird world of influencers and influencer scams. If you like videos like these, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and if you like this video, then give it a like if you want to. Before getting into this video, I want to provide a quick disclaimer. This video and videos like these aren't meant to bash anyone needlessly. They're simply meant to analyze the creator space and the many businesses and shady business practices that result off of this social media bubble that we're currently living in. I don't believe that anyone is 100% good or evil, and please do not send hate to anyone mentioned in this video. This video is simply meant to inform and educate you on the dangerous practices of social media. And now let's get into the video. <laughs> And speaking of rice gum whining, this video is sponsored by Bright Sellers. Sponsorships make it possible for me to continue to create content and grow my level of production, so thank you so much to Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video. Bright Sellers is a service that matches you to wines from all over the world, curated to your palate. Now, if you're newer to my channel, which a lot of you guys are, a little over a year ago, I did a sponsorship with Bright Sellers. Mm. Mm. I love this one. Just got the chills. Mmm. Blood and grass. I felt like I was at a wine tasting event. The wine education cards give me inspiration for what to pair my wine with and helps me understand more seamlessly what elements are in the wines. I was matched with the Wellfleet Dry White and you can see on the card right here what's in the wine, what to pair it with, and that's what I'll be having today. 
I love it too because it's a twist top, which is cool. Um, cheers. <laughs> I love it. That's so good. So how do you receive a Bright Sellers box customized to your taste? All you need to do is take a quick and simple seven question quiz so Bright Sellers can gather your taste preferences and deliver wines you're guaranteed to love. Then the wine is sent directly to you in this beautiful, well-packaged box so you never have to venture into a wine or liquor store. On top of that, the packaging is completely recyclable. It's also plastic free and the smallest carbon footprint in the industry. And Bright Sellers offers wines beyond the typical grocery store wine, including sustainable varietals and biodynamic wines, which is pretty cool. So Bright Sellers is giving my followers 50% off their first six bottle box. That's six bottles for just $53, including shipping, which is pretty awesome. So if you want to support the channel by clicking the link in the description or pinned in the comments to take the quiz and get started today. And Thank you so much to Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video and also thank you to anyone who clicks the link to support this channel. And now let's get back into the video. Yo, what up? It's your boy Rice. Rice Flavor Gum. Do you call me Brian? That's my real name, you know? 400 likes in one day, a thousand plus views in one day, that's insane. A thousand views, almost 300 likes in the first day. <laughs> Yeezys, more Yeezys, more Yeezys, more Yeezys. We're often told that money can't buy happiness. Rice Gum, also known as Brian, you call me Brian that's my real name. was born on November 19th of 1996 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Brian attended Sierra Vista High School and played basketball. Young Brian seemed to be living a fairly normal middle class life. I literally eat breakfast while I get ready. Like, I'm pouring myself up a bowl of cereal in my bathroom. Like, you know how I'm rocking. It's just, you know, I always wake up late for school and stuff like that. So, you know, I gotta do some multitasking. And I wish I could tell you why this. Yeah, bro. No, but did it feel good though? Came to exist on this platform, but it just seems like one day he just decided to make YouTube videos and did. So on September 24th of 2012, when Brian was 15 years old, he created his YouTube channel under the name Rice Gum and uploaded his first video titled Call of Duty MW3 Gameplay Life Story Babysitting Rice Gum. Yeah, what up? It's your boy Rice. Rice Flavor Gum. Can you call me Brian? That's my real name, you know? So you guys are, you know, my subscribers. Oh. I miss the days of YouTube where videos were super random and titles sounded like a fever dream. Although Brian was not the most naturally talented gamer, his audience liked his witty sense of humor and engaging commentary. I'm really funny, I think. I like to troll people. So Brian began live streaming consistently and started to build a core fan base. Brian's initial videos were pretty low quality, which I think every YouTuber starts out that way. Throwback to my Blue Kitchen videos if you remember that. And most of Brian's early videos have been privated or deleted from his channel entirely. And in Brian's first two years of uploading to YouTube, he only accumulated about 4,000 subscribers, which is a lot of people if you think about it, but compared to the numbers that he was going to do, it's pretty abysmal. In 2014, Ricegum tried uploading vlogs, prank videos, and trying out different internet challenges. Basically going through the phase that every YouTuber sort of goes through where they test out different styles and see what works best for their channel. But in 2015, Ricegum was about to strike gold. Strike gold, is that a saying? Rice Gum was about to find his content path. On November 28th of 2015, Rice Gum uploaded his first commentary video titled Are These Kissing Pranks Fake? where he criticized the very controversial content creator Prank Invasion, if anyone remembers that channel. I'm gonna try to kiss my sister. The guy on Prank Invasion would try to convince AKA harass different women on the streets to try and get them to kiss him. What up invaders, Chris here today. I'm dressed as a complete and total nerd. And I'm gonna try to go out to Venice Beach and try to get kisses and have fun with some girls. As always, let's do it. Wow. And Brian called this out for being creepy, which it obviously is. So I'm like, 
shit that could be fake. Like, it was kind of sketchy, like, you know what I mean? So I was watching his other videos. I'm like, what? This shit is not real. You want to play a quick game? Bro, what? That bitch is it's like fuck. And Brian received a ton of positive attention on social media for calling out an obviously creepy dude. Since this type of content worked so well, Rice Gum stuck with it and continued to upload commentary on creepy or weird channels. How is this on YouTube? So basically, if you didn't understand, she said, you close your eyes and I'm gonna guess what you're thinking or, or, or some random shit. And she attacks him. It seems like a young rice gum was just a normal kid who really enjoyed YouTube and wanted to make different videos. All right, man, I think I am done. Um, let's see. Oh, bam, I'm looking dope. Got my joggers on. I'm looking fresh. The next step is to eat some breakfast. So my mom is whipping up something in the kitchen right now. Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to my room. And yes, there's nothing crazy about my room, dude. It's just a bed. It's kind of messy. And that's basically it. I mean, I got some posters over here. I got my homie Jerry Ricegum catching footballs and shit. A lot of his commentary was normal. He looked like a normal kid in a normal bedroom. And there's a certain relatability there. Watching his old videos reminds me of my teenage bedroom. And there's a certain likability to that relatability. So Ricegum kept going with what was working on his channel and went deeper and deeper into shocking commentary videos. Hey guys, it's me again. 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 And eventually, Rice Gum stumbled on a series that became a massive viral success. And that's the series he created on his channel called These Kids Must Be Stopped. Oh, what is up guys, your boy Ray's going back for another video, and before I want to start what I want to talk about about this video, I just want to say, my last video got 900 comments, and I was reading through all of them, once again, I read all comments, and a lot of the comments were just like, Ray's going do more, man, keep going, these are funny, and you know, just all these positive comments, I just want to say thank you, because I just really wanted to spread some awareness for you guys that there's people out there that must be stopped. So let's break down the series These Kids Must Be Stopped, a series that led Rice Gum to rise, or rice, into, well, infamy. In this series, These Kids Must Be Stopped, Rice Gum is reacting to different children who are acting cringy or embarrassing. I would roast him, he would roast me, just back and forth at the end, you know, nothing too serious. I was just scrolling through and just lurking this new app, and I noticed that a lot of the users on this app were like really, really young. Like when I say really young, I mean like 11, 12, 13, like that, like that age group. Like that literally just pissed me off. Like I want to fight this guy now. So it's basically Rice Gum, who is at this time one could say a young adult or old teenager, you know, in his late teens, making fun of children posting embarrassing content on the internet. He says what we just did. Like, he'll be like, did she just say? Okay, yes, bitch, I did. What's the issue? What's the Whoa, did she just say yes, bitch, I did? Now, who is interested in watching videos that are making fun of children? Are adults really interested in watching children make fun of one another? No, only children are interested in watching videos about embarrassing children. So you can already sort of guess who Rice Gum's audience is. So chances are if you're watching this video, you're probably in high school or middle school because you know all my viewers are kind of young. So this entire content series reminds me of like a school bully. It all started with me making a video called These Kids Must Be Stars where I talk about kids that you know were young and doing stuff that I felt like they shouldn't be doing, which was my opinion. Psych, I'll get bullied. I'm the bully. I'm the reason why your kid is scared to go to school every day. Like, yes, you could argue that some people on the internet need to be humbled or need a reality check. And there are a lot of content creators whose sole goal or focus is giving different people reality checks. But children, in my opinion, don't need to be humbled or knocked down a peg. You're basically taking bullying, which is something that children already have to deal with more than they should, and you're amplifying it by posting viral videos that accumulated millions of views making fun of these children on the internet. Is this not the definition of cyberbullying? This person said, why can't there be more guys with this style or hair? What style? Just look at this TikTok right here. 
Is, is that a style? He's wearing black on black. He looks like a nun right now. I don't know what style she's talking about. But children responded to this series very well because children make fun of each other and therefore Rice Gum quickly built a child audience. And this series became a massive breakthrough in Rice Gum's career. <laughs> The first video in this series was uploaded on December 9th of 2015, titled, You Guessed It, These Kids Must Be Stopped. Wait, what? Did she just say that she's about to play with her p***? <laughs> well, yeah, I, so I once again did some research. She's She just turned 13, and she's playing with her p***. What? Dude, does her mother know that she just said this? Alright, so when I was 13, dude, it was like Transformers, G.I. Joe, Hot Wheels, and she's over here playing with her. What? Nah, but she, like, she needs some chill, because she's, I mean, is she actually, like, 13? Because, I mean, she's low-key. Like, she can. <laughs> bro, is she low-key got some titties? I think she's 16 or 15. I ain't gonna lie, bro. She got some titties on her, bro. And this video was basically Brian or Rice Gum reacting to cringy musically stars that are... You guessed it. Children. I did some research. This fool is 13. <laughs> well, yeah, all right, so I once again did some research. She's She just turned 13. If she's 13, I'm 13. You f***ing knock it off right now. And if you don't know what Musical.ly is. I found out about this new app called Musical.ly. And it seems pretty cool. You know, I was looking through it and stuff like that. I feel know what it is. It's similar to Vine, if you heard of that. It's where you record yourself. But I was just scrolling through and just lurking this new app. And I noticed that a lot of the users on this app are like really, really young. Like when I say really young, I mean like 11, 12, 13, like that, like that age. It's basically a cringier version of TikTok before TikTok or a cringier your version of Vine after Vine. And if you don't know what any of that is, I can't help you. Brian also talked about in his video how most of the users on the app, Musical.ly, are young children who are dancing or acting inappropriate and posting fairly suggestive content. The other day I was on the internet and I found some more kids that must be stopped and are out of control. So I decided to make a part two, cause why not? I think she just said, if anyone tried to play you, fuck her best friend or something. Which don't get me wrong, is a huge issue, but I feel like there's better ways of going about this than reposting that content onto YouTube for millions and millions more to see. Brian did not believe in the concept of giving children privacy, and this first video on his series These Kids Must Be Stopped went absolutely viral. And it wasn't long until Brian became unofficially known as the guy who roasted children on the internet. What a great title to have. But people initially liked Brian because he appeared generally humble, surprisingly. Episode 2 was so successful. Again, man. 400 likes in one day, 1,000 plus views in one day. That's insane. Self-aware and appreciative of his audience. Episode 1 was so successful. It got like 1,000 views, almost 300 likes in the first day, I swear. Like, it wasn't even 24 hours. It was like 12 hours. But soon, all of Rice Gum or Brian's humbleness would disappear, and Rice Gum would lose the very values his audience liked him for. I keep a lab, I think. These are pretty expensive. Thousand. We are here in my closet, and I have some explaining to do. As you guys all know, I live in like a $15 million house. All my clothes keep getting $800. I'm gonna start from top to bottom. Yeezy Red Octobers, Fragment 1, Off-White Night. Either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And that scares me. Oh. In 2016, Brian's channel began to primarily focus on his These Kids Must Be Stopped series. And also reacting to people, aka children, who responded to his videos. And by February 20th of 2016, Rice Gum reached the 300,000 subscriber mark on YouTube and had gained almost 200,000 subscribers in a month. And it kind of makes me sad how much people loved his videos where he was making fun of children. Society. And soon after, unfortunately, Rice Gum decided to start incorporating music into his content. He began to write and perform diss tracks at the end of videos where he was responding to someone's responses of his These Kids Must Be Stopped series. 
2016 was really the era of corny YouTube diss tracks. And no one did that better than Rice Gum. That was fire. Shut up! I know it was. How does he know I live with my mom? How am I supposed to come back after that? A few moments later. Oh man, not again. Kill the first time, and this ain't no different. I don't take no L's. Yeah, they say I'm winning. To his credit, or his detriment. I do think it's hilarious that Rice Gum's lyrics are on Genius, the website. Your fans are 10. They don't know what they doing. You rolling up your sleeves, boy, you was looking stupid. You tried to pick that girl up, but you couldn't do it. Skirt, skirt. I'm still trying to think, cause I can't find your talent. You know you can't sing and that you suck at rapping. Try and lick your lips cause you need some chapstick. You think I'm trying to roast you, but I'm just trying to help. Psych, I'm just here to give you this L. All your fans are 10, they don't know what they are doing. I just find it funny that Rice Gum's entire diss track of Jacob Sartorius was basically, ha ha, you're young and your fans are too. You can't go watch me until you do your dishes. You still wait for Santa each and every single Christmas. And you got a bad time, that's not my business. Now, Jacob Sartorius is currently 19 years old. And this was in 2016, about six years ago, which would have made Jacob Sartorius 13. Now, obviously, back in the day, Jacob Sartorius was cringy because guess what? He was 13 years old. All 13 year olds are cringy. Do you want to see me when I was 13 years old? No, you do not. I was extremely awkward and embarrassing. The diss track as a medium of its own was popularized by hip hop culture in the 1990s. And diss tracks are usually music tracks meant to roast another individual through witty rhymes or not so witty rhymes. You still wait for Santa each and every single Christmas. So how did diss tracks go from well-respected works of art in hip hop culture to a way for YouTubers to catch W's or L's and roast one another? Honestly, I could never tell you. Ryan's first diss track was posted on March 7th of 2016 and was titled Jacob Sartorius Roasted Me Again, diss track. And you got a bad time, that's not my business. And the ad said my videos are entertaining. Which did exceptionally well, depressingly, and reached 12 million views. I mean, let's call it what it is. Rice gum went for low hanging fruit, making fun of kids on the internet, literal children, which we view as innocent, helpless, naive, making fun of them, and then creating entire diss tracks on them is punching down in a major way. It is the definition of low hanging fruit. And for whatever reason, at the time, Rice Gum was receiving very little backlash from this. People liked it, which is even more messed up, but of course was in his mind even more of a reason to continue doing it. So Brian or Rice Gum soon became known as not only the guy that would make roast videos on children on the internet, but also the diss track guy who was able to roast anyone who crossed paths with him on the internet. And a lot of people crossed paths with Rice Gum on the internet. You are not cool and you cannot rap. When I see your videos, I never laugh. Been afforded, but you had to be racist. At least I'm not the one who stuck with braces. You had the sub tweet trying to keep it on the low. Like if the fans didn't have me, I wouldn't know. I pass you in subs because you're struggling to grow. I don't think there's anything bigger than your nose. Don't talk to me until you all hit puberty. But Brian's popularity continued to massively rise. And on April 20th of 2016, Brian reached a million subscribers. So yeah. Rice Gum's channel grew an insane amount. From January of 2016 to April of 2016, Rice Gum went from 100,000 subscribers to a million subscribers. That is 900,000 subscribers in four months. 
I feel like that growth is unheard of nowadays. That's 225,000 subscribers every month or 8,000 subscribers every day. That's exponential growth that I honestly cannot even fathom. But one thing that I do have to note, to Ricegum's credit and a lot of YouTubers who grow massively and unexpectedly on this platform, I can't imagine how insane and anxiety-inducing it must be to go from a small YouTuber that not many know about or a smaller creator to all of a sudden having millions of viewers and a million subscribers. It can be just overwhelming. But for Rice Gum, these numbers and this growth was just the beginning. By June of 2016, only two months after celebrating reaching a million subscribers, Rice Gum reached two million subscribers. Two months. But on June 16th of 2016, Brian found himself in his first major controversy. Brian uploaded a video titled The Next Jacob Sartorius Girl Version, where he talked about 10-year-old at the time. That's right, he made a video about a 10-year-old girl named Alabama Luella Barker, who's the daughter of Travis Barker, famous drummer for Blink-182, an icon, and Shanna Mochler, a model, actress, and reality TV star. In this video, Brian criticized Alabama, again, a 10-year-old at the time, for her inappropriate use of makeup, her lack of schooling and poor education, I guess, which, like, she's 10. <laughs> Yo, what is up guys, your boy Rice Gum back for another video. The other day I was on Instagram and I came across this girl's page, right? Tell me how old you think she is. You're probably like, oh, I'm 12, 13. No, this girl is 10 years old. Yeah, she's wearing quite a bit of makeup for her age. Well, take a look at these two pictures and I'm just like, wow, they grew up so fast. Are you learning how to, you know, arch their back a little bit and, you know, kind of poke out the behind area. Seriously, what the heck? Now, don't get me wrong. Children using social media, especially unsupervised, is a major problem right now. But I would say it's sort of the parents' problem. Like, the children are not the ones that should be held accountable for using social media. And even so, drawing more attention to these children on social media doesn't solve anything, especially if you're just roasting them. If anything, if you're getting millions and millions of views on these videos and exposing these children to millions and millions of different viewers, you can expose them to more creepers and you can also encourage children to talk to one another like that too. If children are watching your videos where you're bullying children, they're probably going to mimic that behavior and continue bullying more children. Not to say that rice gum is solely responsible for all the bullying that children partake in, but it definitely encourages and promotes that sort of behavior. But luckily, 30 minutes after after Brian uploaded the video, the video was requested to be removed by Alabama's father, Travis Barker. Barker then went and posted a photo of Brian on his Instagram, where he had quite a following because he's a famous drummer and all, with an Instagram caption that read, This lame is about to take the biggest effing L in history. I'll make sure to videotape it so he can post it to his YouTube. Any leads on where this hashtag pinnafall lives? please DM me. And then the caption was added to later, as I'm assuming someone DM'd him, reading, see you in Vegas at Rice. Alabama's mother, Shanna, also got involved and tweeted. I had like a whistle when I said that. Tweeted. <laughs> Sorry. At Rice Gum, wow, you just roasted my 10 year old daughter on your pathetic channel. You have nothing better to do than tear down a kid. You could kind of tell that their public responses to this video caught him off guard. Like, yeah, when 13 year old Jacob Sartorius responds to one of your videos, it's easy to come back with a super awesome response. But when literal adults are calling you out for your actions, it's a little bit harder to justify them. Oh no, there could be real consequences to my actions, not just fake internet beef. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Uh, I'm in a predicament. Uh, two days ago, I made a video talking about a 10 year old girl. She was wearing makeup, taking selfies, like poking her butt out. A lot of makeup, 10 years old, man. So I made a video. I wasn't being mean. I was just saying, like, yo, she shouldn't have a phone. She should have an 
Instagram, whatever, and a lot of people thought it was funny and got like 100,000 likes in like three hours. Crazy shit. You know, a lot of people thought it was funny, except for two people, man. The mom and the dad. And luckily, the video of Alabama ended up getting removed from YouTube. Uh, I literally worked so hard on my last video and gets taken down for no reason. How they're censoring my opinion about a 10-year-old girl that shouldn't be wearing makeup. And when you click on the link to the video, the screen reads, This video has been removed for violating YouTube's policy on harassment and bullying. But after this situation, Brian stayed out of drama for the rest of 2016. He had a massively successful year on YouTube and collaborated with other larger content creators like Luli Pons and Amanda Cerny and continued to upload content and expand his fan base. <laughs> The year 2017 started on a positive note. On January 3rd of 2017, Brian announced that he was going to start incorporating vlogs into his content and that he was moving from Las Vegas to the Hollywood Hills. Normally, when a YouTuber moves to LA, their audience will say something along the lines of, you've changed or we don't like the new you. And this isn't necessarily what happened to Rice Gum. Not that he didn't change, because he definitely changed. 400 likes in one day, a thousand plus views in one day, that's insane. I was wrong, but I'm living in the hills now. I was crazy, but this ice made me chill out. But weirdly, this change was sort of on brand for him. Even when Rice Gum was still living with his parents in Las Vegas, once he started making money, he sort of started adopting this flashy, flexy lifestyle early on. In some of his early videos, he would constantly annoy his mom by scaring her with how much money he would spend. Do you know anything about Asian parents or just parents in general? They really value money and they hate when their son or daughter just wastes it. <laughs> Watching these videos, it's kind of messed up. She seemed genuinely scared and concerned with the amount that he was spending. But Rice Gum just thought the whole thing was kind of funny. How can I be best sleep in a bitch? So when Brian moved to LA and started adopting this designer flashy lifestyle where he would constantly show people how much money he spent on this and this new designer product he got, it was sort of on brand, a more douchey version of an already fairly douchey person. Rice Gum's online persona seemed to be always focused on dry, sarcastic humor and acting like he didn't care and everything was just a joke. Just having a little bit of fun, joking around. But no one can deny that eventually a terrible transformation took place in which Ricegum's sole focus of his personality became showing off his material wealth, flexing. Bitch, my pockets fill a hundred bills. I'm in the hills. Bitch, my soul just did a hundred bills. I was broke, but I'm living in the hills now. Now, why does one flex? Is it from ego or insecurity? Here's a Reddit post titled, Why is flex culture so prevalent? Without commenting on it much, let's move past the obvious that these influencers usually don't make the kind of money that they want you to think they make. We know those in Hollywood and the like have far greater debt than actual wealth. But moving on from that, I've been fortunate enough to meet quite a few people I would consider extremely wealthy, well into the millions maybe even tens of millions. If you were to take a quick glance at these people, you'd never know they're rich. For the most part, they just drive the same used cars you and I do, live in houses just as big as yours and mine, sometimes even smaller. Heck, one of the families I've known donates 90% of their income and lives a middle-class life on the remaining 10%. Any luxuries any of these families have, they keep to themselves, and they would never ever brag about it online. I have nothing against wealth or even buying extravagant things if you enjoy and utilize. But why is it that so many influencers, TikTok stars, YouTubers, etc. are so keen on showing off their custom Lambos, their mansion in the hills, their $2,000 handbags, etc. Especially when their main audience isn't anywhere near that status. And why do so many people eat it up? 
It bothers me because I've seen people I know who try and put on these same sorts of lifestyles just for Instagram likes. By appearances, it would look like they're millionaires living their best life, when in reality, I know for a fact their life savings are gone and they're in tremendous debt. I think a lot of this brings up the concept of old money versus new money. Old money is well-established inherited wealth from those whose families have been wealthy for many generations, whereas new money is a fortune recently acquired or funds recently raised. Those whose wealth is recently acquired rather than inherited. Those who've grown up in wealthy families through many generations have learned some of the dangers or drawbacks of having a large net worth. People want something from you. You become a walking, living target. So you learn how to hide your wealth well and keep it fairly discreet. People who've come into their wealth, especially fairly quickly, and especially when they're very young, haven't learned this lesson yet, or they're overcompensating. So watching rice gum needlessly flex and needlessly spend makes me sort of sad. He's clearly dealing with a certain level of insecurity and inexperience with his wealth. Coming into money doesn't change who you are. It may give you more opportunities, but it also gives you more responsibility responsibility and more stress. So you might show off and spend that money to desperately try and convince others and maybe even yourself that you made it, that you're okay now. Soon living in LA became an integral part of Rice Gum's personality. I definitely said integral wrong. Why can I say that right now? Integral? 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 Why does that sound wrong to me? But in LA, it seems like, especially at that time, there were quite a bit of different YouTube personalities. And it wasn't long until Rice Gum had some run-ins with YouTube's most infamous. Now, don't get me wrong, what I mentioned earlier still stands. Gaining a large following very quickly can be anxiety inducing and nerve wracking, but gaining a large following fairly quickly can also make you more confident or on the dark side of that, more arrogant. If your following continues to back you up in every single controversy or run-in that you've gone into or you haven't had a lot of accountability, you could start to feel untouchable, like you can do anything you want with very little consequences. I've noticed there's a sort of a correlation between YouTubers who have a very young childlike audience and YouTubers who fall into this trap of feeling untouchable or becoming sort of arrogant. It's like because they have a younger following, they're not often called out for their actions. So then they get more and more and more confident until they get themselves into such a big controversy that they can never recover from. I've made a severe and continuous lapse on my judgment and I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm simply here to apologize. The first main instance of this for Rice Gum involves someone who, if you've been following this channel for a while, you probably know of, and that's Gabby Hanna. On March 28th of 2017, Gabby Hanna and Rice Gum attended a party. The events of this party all documented on Gabby Hanna's Snapchat. Gabby Hanna saw Rice Gum at this party and decided for whatever reason it was a great idea to start something with him at this party and record it all on her Snapchat. She told her audience on Snapchat that Rice Gum was at the party and that she'd been meaning to challenge him to a rap battle. Rice Gum is here and I know that I, like, I want to I wanna challenge him to a battle, but I know he won't do it and it's Alex's birthday so I want to like ruin the party, you know what I mean? But honestly, if Rice Gum ever wants to like live freestyle battle, like drop a beat right now, bitch, I'll murder you. Then Gabby Hanna, filming the whole thing, approached Rice Gum, who looked like he was relaxing or chilling on a couch. Hey, Rice Gum, I just challenged you to a live battle on Snapchat. Would you do it? And she proceeded to challenge him to a live rap battle. Rice Gum said that he wasn't interested, or rather, said, nah. But Gabby Hanna was not satisfied with this and continued and continued to push the matter and Brian, who just looked uncomfortable, just laid back and sort of stayed silent in the video. Alright, so Rice is have his ghost rider today. It's fine. I think we can still battle. It's for good. No? You don't want to do it? 
but unfortunately things took a very dark turn. And the next Snapchat was of Gabby Hanna crying, saying that rice gum had assaulted her. Okay, so update. Sorry if it looks like I'm crying. Um, rice gum didn't think that joke was very funny and he hit me in the middle of a party and shattered my phone. I can show you that in a sec. She also claimed that Brian shattered her phone. And my phone is broken, the screen is broken, the back camera is broken. So I need to get a new phone. Um, and then proceeded to show different bruises that were allegedly from the incident. Now, before I get into the aftermath of this situation, I think it's important to clarify a few things. Now, first off, it's my opinion that in this sort of situation, Gabby Hanna was sort of the initial aggressor who was clearly making Brian uncomfortable after he repeatedly told her no to stop, that he doesn't wanna do this, that he doesn't wanna be filmed, and that's not cool or okay. People have a right to say no or to ask you to leave them alone and that should be respected. But also, and most importantly, it is never, never okay to physically harm anyone. I mean, unless they're physically harming you or threatening to and you're doing it to protect yourself or to protect others. I don't know, not to get this more complicated, but bottom line, most of the time, it's not okay to physically harm anyone. Since both Gabby Hanna and Rice Gum at the time had massive followers Followings, the Snapchat received widespread attention and a lot of people were shocked at the situation that unfolded and a lot of people directed a lot of outrage to Brian. So Brian made a response video to this whole situation and uploaded it on April 2nd of 2017 titled, The Gabby Show Lied About Being Used, My Best Diss Track. This title is just sort of throwing me for a loop. I was accused of being abusive. Diss track. Okay. In this strange nightmare of a video, Rice Gum accuses Gabby Hanna of lying about the entire incident. So many lies surrounding my name. He claims the situation resulted in him having the most backlash he's ever received on the internet. This resulted in the whole internet just hating me, the most hate I've ever gotten. The internet literally thinks I'm a woman bee. So Brian talked about his side of this whole thing and even made a short skit of his version of the events. And from Rice Gum's perspective, he just grabbed and broke her phone, which is, of course, still an act of aggression. But he alleges that he never assaulted her. And I did not hit her there. So her coming up to me with the camera already on didn't even ask me, made me a little bit mad. And when I told her to stop and she wouldn't, that made me even more mad. And that's why I reacted how I reacted. But I am so sorry. And that's where I was in the wrong for. I paid her phone back instantly and fixed my mistakes. Now, I wasn't there and there's no recording of the actual instance in question, so I'm not going to speculate on what is or isn't the truth. It's just not really my place. Rice Gum then released a diss track on Gabby Hanna titled, I didn't hit her, parentheses, diss track. So in my face, now her screen crack, bitch really tried to make a move. She played games like 2K, but I spent that on my sweater too. So going from making a diss track about a 13 year old to making a diss track about allegations of abuse. Moving on to bigger things, I guess. It seems like, depressingly, this diss track was pretty well received. Before this, Rice Gum's diss tracks were just him in his bedroom. But for this diss track, Rice Gum decided to up the quality and make an entire music video. And his audience loved it, and this music video went viral, accumulating 6 million views in 6 days. That's a million views a day. And has accumulated 50 million views since its initial upload. His fan base loved the high quality music videos and diss tracks, so Brian decided to continue producing more and more of them. 
On June 2nd of 2017, Ricegum reacted to Jake Paul, fellow obnoxious YouTubers, music video and song, It's Everyday Bro, featuring Team 10. Jake Paul constructed a social media talent and management company, which he called Team 10. The best part about it is that we're all young and aspiring to do big things in Hollywood. We all just teamed up and help each other out and collaborate and love each other. Well, some of them are cool, I guess. Which was an absolute disaster mess of a company. And honestly, too much to explain in this video. Let me know if you want me to do a video on Jake Paul. But anyways, a social media personality known as Alyssa Violet was kicked out of the group Team 10. He got pissed and kicked me out. It ended with me being homeless. They alleged she did a lot of things. But you still hit my phone last night. It was both and I got that text up too. And all the recorders too. She alleged they did a lot of things. You do not treat someone like that. I never thought that someone could be so and evil. Did Rice Gum really care about any of this drama? It's hard to say. But Rice Gum had become really social media savvy at this point. He knew what would work, what would get views, and from his past experiences, he learned that drama and controversy, when handled right, can be an excellent business move. I think he also knew that Alyssa Violet was a really popular and loved creator at the time and that it would be advantageous of him to have her on his team and collaborate with her consistently. If you look at Ricegum's most popular videos, a lot of them are him collaborating with, I mean, let's be honest, internet hotties, probably because his following was made up of young boys. So these collab videos are what really accumulated some of the most views on his channel. So Rice Gum really, really jumped on this Team 10 Alyssa Violet drama and collaborated with Alyssa Violet on a Team 10 or Jake Paul diss track. Well, you need to do something about this. Should I do this song? Hey, you low-key should. Right? That would be fine. Wait, will you help me? Oh, me? Nah, I don't want any part of this. Like, me and Jake are cool. No, dude, 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 that'd be so legit. And, like, it's not gonna be, like, a diss. It'll be, like, funny. It'll be funny. It'll be funny. I can't. I can't. Jake is... which was called It's Every Night Sis. And this video went viral for whatever reason. And Rice Gum milked this drama on his channel to the max. He uploaded reaction videos to the song, different versions of the song, and the original music video itself, which has now garnered over 194 million views. That's depressing. This whole video is just making me sad. And this music video became Rice Gum's most viewed video of all time. He also made the song available on iTunes, where it was certified platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America in March of 2018 and reached Billboard Hot 100 charts and Canadian Hot 100 charts. And Ricegum continued to make more and more diss tracks on different members of Team 10, like Tanner Fa, which he dissed in a video titled God Church, which accumulated 74 million views and reached number one in comedy digital track sales charts. Either way, Ricegum very clearly had a system down and it was working very well for him. I personally, to speculate, don't think Ricegum really ever cared that much about Team 10. Ricegum's just always gone for low hanging fruit and Team 10 was, at that time, the lowest of hanging fruit. Literally everyone on the internet hated Team 10 at that time for some legitimate reasons. <laughs> residents in a West Hollywood neighborhood are angry. They say they've had enough of the chaos created by a social media star known for his crazy antics. So you're bound to win internet brownie points for piling on. And internet brownie points, Rice Gum did win. But not every controversy is an easy win, something Rice Gum was about to learn the hard way. If you were to make a Rice Gum content cop, I mean, that would blow him up even more. Oh no! Content creator and YouTuber Ian Washburn, or Ian, I don't know why I forgot to look up how to pronounce his name. 
sorry, who's better known as iDubbbz, uploaded a video on rice gum that was part of his series called Content Cop. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Content Cop was a series created by Ian where he critiqued various content creators and their online behavior. Kind of a cool channel concept. Hey dumbass, you did something stupid in the past, you can be criticized for it. Content Cop was huge on YouTube and it seemed like a lot of people respected Ian's take on things. Whether that's a good thing or not, I really don't know. But a lot of creators were really scared of these content cops and to YouTubers, it was a really big deal if you became the subject of one. So iDubbbz uploaded a video on rice gum. Dinga, 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 dinga. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da -da. That's right, everyone. I'm talking about Asian Jake Paul and uncovered a lot of things that Brian's audience didn't previously know about him. Or rather, maybe, exposed Rice Gum, or Brian, to a more mature audience that could really see through his tactics. For example, Ian played a video clip of Rice Gum making various sexual assault jokes towards a woman who openly talked about being sexually assaulted on his live stream. You should show the clip of you saying the comments is what you should be doing. But what he you. No, but did it feel good though? How long did, like, did the last for? I meant your list. Oh, okay. So it's not that bad. Did you sue him and shit or no? Guys, if you want her first, she will sue you, so. Ian also played a clip of Rice Gum on a live stream expressing how much he wanted to have SEX with a girl who he mentioned was 15 or 16. Her shit. Yeah, bro, she definitely wants to me. Bro, she low-key got some titties. I think she's 16 to 15. I ain't gonna lie, bro. She got some titties on her, bro. Idubs also exposed how Ricegum would lie to women, saying he wasn't streaming their private conversations when he really was. I basically lied to some girls on my stream. No, but I'm not streaming, though. I just wanted to call you. Oh, you're not? No, I know. I just wanted to call you and just talk. I'm not live right now, right? No, no, no. Basically, we were just chilling out with Migos. She didn't know that I was live to 3,000 people. Ian also questioned one of Rice Gum's giveaways, claiming that Rice Gum never actually declared a winner. What happened to the clickbait challenge winner? And last but not least, make sure to put hashtag clickbait challenge in the description because at the end of two weeks, the video with the most views will win a humongous prize. So go out, get creative, and let's get clickbaiting. Yeah, but we're still waiting for the winner. You didn't announce it. Not on YouTube, not on Twitter. Not on Facebook, not on Instagram, not even on Google+. Plus. One of the things that Ian showed in this video that is, to me, the most abhorrent thing that Rice Gum has done was a video Brian uploaded where he went to the streets of Los Angeles and imitated how someone would throw money at an exotic dancer, except he was throwing money in this way at homeless people. Why? iDubbbz also pointed out Brian's hypocrisy in the Gabby Hanna situation because he claims that he acted out in outrage towards Gabby Hanna and smashed her phone because she was filming him without consent. And yet, Brian has consistently recorded women without their consent and posted it online. Would you guys like to hear the juiciest bit of hypocrisy? Probably should have thrown her phone. But I mean, if you're gonna record me at a party when I'm off guard. This girl literally came up to me in person, didn't ask me, hey Rice, do you mind if I vlog? She just came up to me, camera already on, and I was so unexpected. It kind of sounds like he doesn't like being recorded without his consent. How interesting. No, but I'm not streaming though, I just wanted to call you. Oh, you're not? No, I know, I just wanted to call you and just talk. Now, if you're like, hey, Rice, come on streaming, he fooled you, don't trust him. Fuck out of here, you snitches, man. I would've got nudes, bro, but y'all was really fucking up my tempo. I don't even know why I even lied, bro. Fucking people snitch way too much. A lot of these situations were really shocking and really gross to a lot of people. And this content cop received over 51 million views and 2 million likes since its initial upload. From this, Rice Gum lost a ton of subscribers initially, so he uploaded a response video which had a huge amount of dislikes. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. I'm already seeing tweets like, Rice Gum, hurry up and respond! Oh, this, this, you're gonna take it out, but like, how could I respond to a video in a day when he took months to make a video on me? I'm not saying I need a month to make a response, I'm just saying like, give me like a day or two to come up with something. So then Rice Gum came out with his own diss track against iDubbbz, where he brought in the woman who he made fun of for being sexually assaulted, and then threw money at her. <laughs> Should I kiss you back? I 
Watch it. I mean... Did it feel good? Yay. And this video received 1 million dislikes. Well, 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 well. Well, well, well. It looks like the roaster got roasted. How the turntables have turned. How the turntables. It seems that Rice Gum's reputation was knocked down a peg. But if Rice Gum has always responded so well to controversy, why did this one throw him off so much? Well, first off, like I mentioned, it sort of exposed him to a more mature audience who could see through a lot of his antics. And I think simultaneously, Ian was a bit more mature, logical, and critical than some of the other adversaries that Rice Gum had encountered in the past. This is Rice Gum. Bro, these kids are like 12. What are they doing, bro? Bro, these kids must be stopped. Dang, my parents would never let me do that. Therefore, the whole, ha ha, you have a big nose, or ha ha, you're young. All your fans are 10, they don't know what they are doing responses didn't really give him that W on this one. So Rice Gum's reputation was knocked down a peg. Now was his career destroyed from this? Unfortunately, no. This is just another unsurprising example of a young, rich, famous kid being an asshole in another country. On February 4th of 2018, Rice Gum was featured in a commercial for Monster alongside Iggy Azalea for the NFL Super Bowl. Then in June of that year, Rice Gum uploaded a vlog in Hong Kong where he was seen doing a ton of offensive things. For example, he joked about many times wanting to have dog and cat meat. No, is that a dog or something? What? Like, that shit look disgusting. Okay, bro, we should try a little mail mail. Sir, uh, where can I find on the mail mail? The, the doggy? Uh, no. Sir, uh, where can I find some dog? Yo, where are the dogs? Where are they? He also acted blatantly disrespectful to the people of Hong Kong. Hey, hey, uh, where are the hoes at? So where are the bitches at? Bitch. Hey, where are the hoes at? Uh, yeah, so we're in China. I'm eating this ice cream, but like, I don't want it anymore. It's like, I'm full, so like, I don't want to waste it. So like, I'm just trying to give it to someone out here that might need it, you know? Like, I'm always about that positivity. Can you eat this for my friend? Please, please, please. Oh, for you. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Um, um, um. Yeah. And many content creators criticized Rice Gum's behavior. This is just another unsurprising example of a young, rich, famous kid being an asshole in another country. Simply Rice Gum has embarrassed himself publicly, harassed, and uh, did not respect the culture of Hong Kong. Recently, there's a very popular YouTuber from the States coming to Hong Kong and basically being extremely disrespectful to the people, to the culture, to even the language that we speak. The vlog was so offensive, in fact, that it received worldwide attention, being covered in many major news outlets and articles. But Rice Gum's response to all of this in a video was that the whole thing was just a joke. Oh, I'm Chinese also, right? And like the American culture, like I watch other like, you know, black comedians make jokes about like, you know, black stereotypes and stuff like they eat fried chicken and like white people make white jokes and you know, Hispanic people make Hispanic jokes. And it's like what I did was like, you know, I thought, you know, since I was Asian, you know, I was allowed to make these, you know, Asian stereotypes. Like, don't you guys know? Something isn't allowed to be offensive or offend you if it's a joke. <laughs> Looking at all these different situations, my conclusion is that Rice Gum is just an immature dude. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense that he would be. He rose to fame so quickly and unexpectedly when he was still kind of a kid himself. With a lot of YouTubers who rise to fame really quickly when they're younger, I've sort of noticed that their maturity level stays frozen at the point in time that they became famous. You could say a similar thing for Tana Mojo, Jake Paul, 
all these different social media figures. They weren't really given an opportunity to grow up and become a full adult before they had all these adult responsibilities just sort of thrown at them. Now this immaturity initially worked in his favor because he was talking about children to a child audience. So his maturity level kind of matched that. So chances are if you're watching this video, you're probably in high school or middle school because you know all my viewers are kind of young. But once a broader YouTube audience and internet as a whole was exposed to him and he had to defend and explain his actions to them, his arguments sort of crumbled. Believe it or not, not everything in life can be solved with a diss track. But things were about to take a pretty dark turn as Rice Gum would go from YouTuber fooling children to a full blown con man. I guess you buy a mystery box, you open it, and you get like one random, either dope item or bad item, and it's like a mystery, it's a surprise, right? January 1st of 2019, Ricegum uploaded a sponsored video titled How I Got AirPods for $4. Ricegum had partnered with a company called Mystery Brand, a company that supposedly sells virtual mystery boxes. The service is supposed to sort of capitalize off of two things, gambling and the mystery box trend. Now at this time on YouTube, there's a huge trend of mystery boxes where people would order these mysterious boxes and open the unknown contents of this box and upload that to their YouTube channel. With Mystery Brand, users paid a flat price to open digital mystery boxes. Well, me and Mystery Brand actually teamed up if you don't know what it is. Basically, it's a site that has a ton of these like random mystery boxes. Like right here, he has like a Yeezy and Supreme and like technology, like smartphone one. I don't know. I guess you buy a mystery box, you open it and you get like one random either dope item or bad item. It's like a mystery. It's a surprise, right? And what was inside was a surprise of sorts, like a lottery or a a slot machine, for example. Mystery boxes claimed that you could win massive prizes on the site. Like they literally claimed you could win a multi-million dollar mansion or a Lamborghini. The most expensive Los Angeles realty. What does that even mean, realty? Well, you can't even click it. All the way down to Icicle, site balance. I'm willing to bet that this is probably what 99% of the people are getting. But as you could probably guess, most people would win nothing or very cheap prizes. Or you might be so lucky as to win a ginger man site balance. Did they not complete this? Like what is with the site balance? So Ricegum, as well as his old friend, Jake Paul, promoted these sites to their millions of followers. I just got the handbag. Yo, that's a $10,000 handbag. I'm about to sell it. Yo, $10,000, yo. I'm about to sell it back. And at first I was like, is this a scam? I don't really know, but hey, it came to the house. Four Let's go. We are about to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on mystery boxes. And both Rice Gum and Jake Paul were reportedly paid at least $100,000 through the sponsorship deal. $100,000! I'm sure it's really hard to walk away from an opportunity to have $100,000, but like, come on, let's do a little bit little bit of critical thinking here. You have a child audience and you're promoting a site that's similar to gambling. Is this really a good idea? So obviously, criticism of this sponsorship followed soon after the videos were posted. Well, I don't think I need to look much deeper into this to know that it's a very strange overseas scam. A lot of people wondered whether Rice Gum and Jake Paul had been given better odds of winning on the Mystery Brand site as part of their deal with Mystery Brand. But Tim Perk, owner of Mystery Brand, stated that this was not the case. Our site provides everyone with equal odds of winning certain prizes, Perk said. We also incorporated an independent service often used by online casinos to ensure that everything is fair and transparent and provides guarantees that the winnings were random and not predetermined 
determined in any way. Perk also told The Verge via email that some of the prizes offered on the mystery brand site were not owned by them, such as the multi-million dollar mansion in LA. We do not need to physically own these cars or houses to include them as prizes in the box, Perk said. If the user were to win such a prize, we would either offer them the exact money value of the prize, or our representatives would help personally fly into the city of the winner and help them with the purchase of a car or house. Sounds legit. However, none of this information was listed on the Mystery Brand FAQ page, and there was no hint that Mystery Brand did not own the items that it was selling. Tim Perk also rejected the notion that Mystery Brands was selling counterfeit designer items, which some Reddit users also alleged. The sketchiest part is that Tim Perk told The Verge that the reason why a lot of their items took so long to ship wasn't because they were counterfeit, but because they were working with StockX, which is a street seller brand. He even said, StockX has a longer delivery time because each item is thoroughly checked for authenticity and we would happily sacrifice delivery time to ensure our customers only receive authentic products of the highest quality. But then the weirdest thing is that StockX told The Verge that it had no idea of mystery brand's existence and had not partnered with the site. On January 4th of 2019, Ricegum uploaded a response video to the backlash about this sponsorship, where he explained that his manager secured the partnership for him and that he didn't even think it was that big of a deal. I don't even think it's a big deal. So the other day I posted a video where I was exploring this website, basically my management just came. At the end of the video, he kind of apologizes, maybe, and handed out several Amazon gift card codes. I'm an asshole. Like, what was I thinking? Like, I can't really do much because I already did it. The damage has been done. You guys already saw Money Hungry side of me and it is what it is and there's nothing I can really do but say sorry and give you these Amazon gift cards so I'm sorry it just wouldn't happen again Amazon cost 10 to 20 dollars just a little giveaway it's, it's the least I can do after you know this you know um okay have a good day guys however people ended up discovering that these codes were already expired so was all of this not that big of a deal the biggest problem with mystery brand is that their whole establishment is basically fraudulent they're essentially a gambling website that ricegum marketed to his as he admitted younger fan base the definition of gambling is the wagering of something of value on an event with an uncertain outcome to win something else of value if you transfer money to Mystery Brand and the site and then use that money to purchase a random mystery box with an unknown prize, then in my opinion, you kinda gambling. And I'm sure for a lot of children, this was the first time they were ever introduced to that concept. In 2008, an article was written and published that researched the impact on gambling advertisements and marketing to children. The report emphasized that gambling is one of the fastest growing industries globally, and that there is considerable evidence to suggest that minors gamble more frequently and develop more gambling-related problems than any other age group. The article the article also went into how the use of celebrities and famous personalities to endorse gambling brands is becoming more and more popular and widespread. Research shows that when celebrity endorsements are used, advertisements are more believable. The message recall is enhanced brand recognition improves, and there's a more positive attitude about the brand as a result. Ultimately, the promotion of gambling to Rice Gum's young audience in a sensationalized way is a situation concerning morality, or lack thereof. Thinking of where Rice Gum started with an audience that loved his honesty, I'm saddened to see the person that he's become. Sure, maybe Rice Gum has money, but I still can't imagine that he sleeps very well at night. I can't imagine that he's happy with the things that he's done to get to where he is. Money doesn't help you like yourself. And maybe if you're constantly spending money on flashy items to try and make yourself look good, well, maybe you don't actually feel good about yourself and you're doing that to compensate. It's endless, bro. It's like you post a video, guys, and you have to go post another one, bro.
And after you're done, you have to go do another one, bro. I'm just done. In 2019, Ricegum started to become inconsistent with his YouTube uploads. He uploaded some videos with his then girlfriend and even created a second channel that was supposed to be family friendly content called Family Gum, which for some reason that word sounds really gross to me. And apparently, he even made his girlfriend sign a contract where he would get 10% of any money she made off of social media. Based Basically, Ricegum and his girlfriend, they were dating. Ricegum put her under a contract in case she blew up because of the relationship, so he would get a percentage of her money. Which is an interesting thing to do to your significant other. But once they broke up, I know, right? Shocking. You create a family channel with your girlfriend, get her to sign a contract where she gives away 10% of all of her income, and you still break up? There's no hope for any of us. But anyways, once they broke up, his upload stopped once again. Gum streamed a little bit on Twitch, just like old times, but remained inconsistent and mostly inactive. In one live stream, Gum talked about his experience experience on YouTube. Every YouTuber I meet, they don't like YouTube. It's not fun, but you sit here in front of the camera and you have to act like a certain person and you edit. And like, I, like, I'm not a slave to it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I'm not trapped to it where like, oh, I need money, I gotta continue to post, like, nah, bro. And then Brian suggested that he is likely retired from YouTube altogether. The YouTube shit changed, like, I'm just not, I'm not following along, bro, I'm just not posting. Pe like, people saying shit like, why don't you upload? That shit don't bother me, bro, like, I'm really comfortable with my own shit. But that doesn't mean that Rice Gum's shenanigans have stopped, unfortunately. And somehow this story ends up at cryptocurrency. And I know, we're all super tired of hearing that word. It seems like literally every influencer with no moral compass has shilled a crypto scam at some point. And surprise, surprise, Ricegum was involved in what is, in my opinion, the biggest crypto scam of all time. In June of 2021, Ricegum, along with members of a social media slash gaming group called Face Clan, were all influencer ambassadors for a crypto token called Save the Kids. My name's Frazier. My name's Jarvis. I'm Tico. I'm Ricegum. I'm Nikon. And I support Save the Kids token. 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 Ricegum, notorious for his previous participation in other alleged scam websites, was featured front and center among the four Face Clan members. Save the Kids was marketed as a charity token meant to give a percentage of the transaction fee to the Binance charity wallet. It all seems like something that was started with good intentions, however, for many of the influencers involved, this was not the case. Save the Kids is supposed to give money to kids and, and, and save them, I guess? and a huge group of top influencers jumped on board to promote it. This ambitious sounding project named Save the Kids did not save one single kid whatsoever. As Save the Kids became an opportunity for them to take part in a massive pump and dump scheme. All these people promoted this charity coin right before launch, the price pumped, they got out. They, they they deleted their tweets suddenly out of nowhere. They said, hey, my manager called. I can't do this. They backed out of this project like a Homer Simpson meme and they ran away. The term pump and dump is defined as a manipulative scheme that attempts to boost the price of a stock or security through fake recommendations that are false, misleading, or greatly exaggerated, allowing the perpetrators to sell their positions after the hype has led to a higher share price. Due to the lack of educated regulation in crypto, pump and dumps are very, very common in this space. And immediately after the Save the Kids token launched on June 5th, some of the ambassadors and early investors dumped their coins onto the fans who were either fooled into thinking they're helping a good cause or newbie investors who thought they're early at buying into some greatly undervalued project. So influencers heavily promoted and pushed the Save the Kids token, 
waited till their supporters purchased all the token, therefore boosting the overall price. Then they immediately sold substantial amounts of the token, massively profiting off of it, and leaving all of their fans and followers who purchased this token in the dust with massive losses. Which is kind of ironic considering it was a charity token meant to give to the poor. The YouTubers CoffeeZilla and Some Ordinary Gamers both led separate investigations into Save the Kids, both investigations concluding there was likely deliberate fraud taking place behind the scenes. The biggest scumbag, greedy people on earth who are happy to sell you out for a few bucks. And all of a sudden, everyone involved started pointing fingers at one another. Even to this day, after the whole situation has died down, it's still fairly unclear who was responsible for the fraud that was the Save the Kids token, or whether there'll be any legitimate repercussions or accountability for the people that partook in this massive scam where a lot of people lost a lot of money. Ricegum's face was all over this Save the Kids project, but he never addressed the role he played in it all. Ricegum later did a live stream on Twitch interacting with popular streamers Pokimane and Mizkif, where the crypto scam was vaguely addressed. Hook me up with the crypto next time, <laughs> I'm being serious. Hook me up, man. Yo, yo, hit, yo, hit my line. Yo, if y'all want some crypto shit, Hit my line, bro. Uh, Ricegum continued to joke about the situation, telling Mizkif his lawyer told him, we straight. Yo, my viewers are so fucked that they be laughing at me. Like, bro, it's crazy. Right, nah, I talked to my lawyers. He said we straight. I, no, I talked to my lawyers. He, he, he said we straight. He explained that all he did was send out one tweet and got compensated right after. No, I, I uh, wasn't doing it. I did it. Bro, I did one tweet. I did one tweet, bro, and I thought nothing of it. I just did send tweet, got my. Oh, you know, his lawyer said it's chill. All right, That's bet. fine. Bet. We're good. Exactly. Even if Ricegum just promoted the product, there's still some responsibility there. And even though thousands were likely scammed due to Ricegum's influence, Ricegum seems to just find the whole situation funny, once again making the backlash into a joke. Not Ex yo, if y'all trying to scam, bro, That's hit me. Crazy. Yo, hit my line, stream. Do you believe Though I'm sure he feels so lighthearted about it because he didn't get as much backlash as others involved in this scheme have. So how does one sum up rice gum's time on the internet? I feel like I'm dehydrated or something. That like dry mouth sound like really shows up on the mic. So how does one sum up Ricegum's time on the internet? It seems that Ricegum represents everything that people have come to hate about YouTubers. Greed, exploitation, manipulation of your audience, and blatant arrogance. I was broke, but I'm living in the hills now. I was crazy, but this ice made me chill out. I don't know if there's much saving rice gum, especially since it seems his time on YouTube has come to an end, and I hope that young stars of the future don't play into the same antics that rice gum did. And I think in the end, rice gum is a cautionary tale to future YouTubers that these antics, flexing, acting arrogant and irresponsible and immature, really doesn't work in the long run and doesn't build a sustainable YouTube career. So I'm hoping that we see better stars of the future. And that's all for today's video thank you so much if you made it all the way to the end and if you did comment loved this video on jake paul to confuse a lot of people who haven't made it to this point and i hope you guys are all doing well and i'll see you in the next video bye